How is everyone doing today? My name is Chris, and welcome to Bourbon Sane. We're back today, and we've got round number four, the fourth blind tasting in our Battle of the Bourbon series. We're trying to figure out the best barrel-proof bourbon on the market. Now, there's been three episodes before this where we tried four whiskeys blind, head-to-head -head against each other. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check them out right now. What we're doing is we're going to be picking two winners from each round and advancing them to the next round. So immediately following this tasting, we're going to be moving on to the Elite Eight. We'll pick two from each of those rounds, we'll have our final four, and we'll determine the best barrel proof on the market. I've had a lot of fun with this series already. Gotta say a quick thank you so much to all of you that have watched the series, supported the series. Do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment. Let me know what's your favorite barrel proof from this round. I don't know what I'm trying yet, but you know what it is. So let me know what your favorite barrel proof is. We'll find out the results for what I like. I've got my water here, results in an envelope. Let's determine our Elite Eight. Let's do it. Shuffle them up first for all of you. All right, good enough. Now, these are always blind to me. Um, caps have been off for 15 minutes or so, so we'll put them back on now and get that lock of aroma. Let's get right into it here. Sample number one. Immediately, I'm getting oak. Um, this has got some age on it for sure. Pretty nice balance though. I'm getting some brown sugar, toasted almond almost. Definitely a little bit of nuttiness. Got some proof punch too. You know, could be taking that, that cap off right away. First pour of the day sometimes to get that proof. So let's give it a sip. Cheers everyone. Mmm. Ooh, that's nice. I got milk chocolate. Milk chocolate just jumped in the center of my palate. But it's also got that nuttiness I described, so it's almost like a, a chocolate-coated almond. Mmm. That's nice. Proof punch leaves an awesome, awesome tingle on the palate. I think, I'm, I think that's rye tingle, too, on the center to back of the palate. Nice mouth coating still sticking to the sides. Good pour. We're starting out strong in this round. Let's go. All right, sample number two. Ooh, this has got an, a little like richness to it. Some definite richness coming through on this. Creamy oak, a lot of like, like creamy vanilla, almost like a whipped a whipped cream coming through on the nose for me. There's the proof though that time through. Whew. I'm definitely not getting as much oak on this one as I did in sample number one, but it's definitely like whipped whipped cream or marshmallow almost is what I'm getting. Ooh, that smells good. I don't know. I like that too. Let's give it a sip. Mmm. Holy cow, that's good. Wow. It's nutty too. I got nuttiness in both these first two. Um, that has got such good mouth coating. It's creamy. It's rich. It's literally, it's it tastes like a whipped whipped vanilla to me. I don't know. Whatever that is, that is very pleasant. <laughs> I like that one. I like that a lot. Um, mm, I could sit there and drink that all day, I think. So, well, I, I can't wait to come back to that one when we go back through these. All right, sample number three. Really got to stick my um, nose down in the Glen to, to get something out of it. This smells grainy almost. I'm getting a grain note. Um, by grainy, I mean like youthful, kind of like fresh, fresh corn. You know, that kind of corny note from youthful whiskey. Um... It's more alcohol burn coming through than it is proof. Definitely brown sugar coming through. I mean, the caramel vanilla is there, um, but for me, it's heavy, like that dusty, almost dusty corn, which I describe a lot for youthful, youthful whiskey. Not a bad nose at all, though. I mean, and not terrible. You know, the alcohol burn was there, but for for what smells like a youthful whiskey, it, it doesn't smell terrible. <laughs> if that makes sense. A lot of times with youthful whiskeys, I'm immediately turned off from it. I don't want it. So, mm. 
Mm. It drinks youthful too. It does. Um, the dusty corn, but there's like there's there's some depth there actually. Um, I feel like this is a whiskey that would be really good in about th three more years, three four more years, because I am starting to get the the barrel notes coming through. You know, the oaks coming through. What I describe as like that brown, you know, that brown sugar that's still prevalent on the palate, and then the the caramel vanilla. You know, when there's a whiskey that I don't get a lot of extra in, I just kind of describe caramel vanilla. Um, if I'm not getting much more out of it, other than you know, I tell you what I, I tell you what I get um, all the time. But that's like my those are my go-to for whiskeys. They're in every single bourbon. You know, they caramel vanilla is really in every single bourbon. Like it's not a made-up note. They're really there. But in non-overly complex whiskeys, sometimes those are the only two things I get. So, all right, sample number four. Again, this has a grainy note in it, just like three did. Graininess, but um, possibly older, I think, than on, on this one. It's still got that, that very farmy fresh corn that's just been mashed up smell. Not as much of that, um, that brown sugar as I got in three though. It smells like a, actually kind of a creamy, a kind of a creamy nose. So I'd say maybe like creamed corn is how I would describe this one. Not bad. Let's give it a sip. Hmm. So the creamed corn turned more into like a corn casserole, like a corn casserole on the palate. My mom always makes corn casserole at our like family get togethers. And that's what this tastes like to me. Um, it's, it's very sweet though. It's got a lot of sweetness to it. Um, I can't really describe what that sweetness is. It's almost like the corn casserole note, but it's got a lot more sugar added almost. Like much more sweet than just the corn. There's something something else there in that. I don't know. Something there I gotta I gotta think about. We'll take some time. Um, again, I'll take the tops off these, let them open up for about 10 minutes. We'll come back, see if anything changes. Usually does when I try them in this order. All right, we're back. Took 15 minutes there. Let the palate rest. These have been opening up. We're gonna put the tops back on now. And we're going to head back in with sample number four. So let's go right into it. You know, it's, it's creamy. It's got some creaminess on it. I don't, I don't mind the creaminess. <laughs> it doesn't have a huge array of bourbon notes though. Like I'm not getting a ton of vanilla, a ton of, you know, caramel, almost no brown sugar. Like I described with three. You know, it's a good nose, but it's it's still got that graininess. You know, it's still got almost like that youthful whiskey nose. It does not nose like a cast strength whiskey either. You know, it, it's it smells solid, but just nothing. Um, it's making me want to drink like some other whiskeys do. So let's go into it. Mm. Hmm. Okay. That gave me a weeded profile note. Almost like a butterscotchy um cinnamon, a little bit of cinnamon, butterscotch. The creaminess holds true with the butterscotch. It's almost like a butterscotch candy. Uh pretty good. You know, again, I'm not getting a lot of you know, like obviously caramel came through that time with like the butterscotch and caramel. There's something else in there though. I don't know. I can't put my finger on what that is. Um, I'll think about it, you know, on the next break. And when I try them off camera side by side, I'll see if I can come up with a note for you guys. Okay. All right. Sample number three. Yep. These, these two definitely are young. I think they seem that way at least. More proof coming through on this one than this. 
not as much of that creamy richness, but this has more classic bourbon notes. You know, the backbone on this whiskey is there. That's why I said like three years from now, it's going to be really good stuff. <laughs> it's still good now. It's just the potential, you know, sometimes when you try like new make off a of still or you try whiskey that's young and you're like, ah, that's not going to be good even with five years, six years. This is going to be good in three years. Like I can tell it's going to be good. I don't mind it. Decent mouth coating. Nothing, not, not a very long finish. Medium finish. Um, it's gone now. But the flavor that hits the front of the palate is pretty good. It's got nice that nice corn sweetness. Little bit of the caramel vanilla. Um, solid. You know, it's solid. This is a like $35, $40 bourbon to me is what this would be. You know, and it's barrel proof, so maybe $45. That's, it is what it is. All right, sample number two. Oh, this is heaven on earth. Whatever this is, this is heaven. When God meets you at the pearly gates, this is the whiskey he gives you. He says, here, for, for your life. That's the pearly gate whiskey. That, that's good stuff. Whatever this is. This could be some swill for all I know. I don't know what this is. Whatever this is, though, today... This is the sweet spot of the bottle, I'll tell you right now. Mm, I don't think I gave a single tasting note there, but I'm going to go for a sip anyway. Explosion of flavor. Deep, rich caramel. Creaminess. Creamy caramel. There's... Absolute nuttiness in this. You know, I said that on, on one, two, so we'll see if that holds true going back through. This absolutely has nuttiness. Um, it's more of like a peanut note, but it's almost tossed and coated in that caramel. Like, I'm getting a lot of caramel, a lot of, a lot of peanut note, but it is delicious. Like, the mouthfeel and the mouth coating it gives you on this, absolutely great stuff. Great stuff. Going to be hard to beat that. I'll tell you right now, a little spoiler alert. Going to be hard to beat that. All right, back to sample number one. Whew. Alcohol burn, uh, taking that cap off. That's better. Nice balance on this. You know, the oak is definitely prevalent for me here. A lot of char this time coming through as compared to the first time through. I'm getting that those barrel tannins, the barrel char coming through. Cinnamon on this. And what smells like rye spice, like I'm getting pepper on the nostrils here. Peppery notes. Again, leaning towards almond, you know, sugar-coated almond. Smells good. Smells good. That's another hitter. That is another hitter. Everything I just described on the nose, um, coming through on the palate, and it's good. I mean, I'm getting sticking on the front of my lip. <laughs> it's just completely mouth coating on this for me. Um, wow. Good stuff. This is another tough round, guys. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what any of these are. We're going to find out. I'm going to try them off camera, see if anything changes, see if my order changes at all. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. All right, everyone, we're back. Let's figure out what two whiskeys are going to be moving to the next round that'll determine our lead eight. Let's see what the lead eight's going to be. I got the results. Let's get them out. Let's find out. All right, so coming in fourth place, sample number two, which is New Riff Single Barrel. I totally forgot I included this. So this is the one I described as the whiskey that will be good in three, four, five years. And... I couldn't agree more with myself <laughs> now that I know what it is. So I say this a lot for New Riff anyway because I love what they're doing. Um, you know, they're they're formerly OKI New Riff. They they're just making good whiskey. You know, originally they were blending. Now this is their own product for you. They're gonna have the five year coming out very soon. Their rye whiskey is some good stuff. Um, they're making some of the best rye at that age, you know, at the four year age, it's it's really good stuff. And these bourbons, about 45 bucks, 
Um, not a bad price for a barrel proof bourbon, you know? And you have to appreciate it for what it is. You know, you have to you have to go into it realizing it's a four year whiskey, it's gonna taste youthful, but appreciate it for what it is. So coming in third place, sample number four, Jefferson's Ocean Cast Strength. Oh my word. Another one I totally forgot was included, even though this is the last one I should know all these whiskeys. <laughs> this is Voyage 21. So this is the most recent release of the cast strength. Um, I I hate to say it, but like, it's average whiskey. Like, it is. Um, it's cast strength, it's got that nice, like I said, that almost like a creamy note, but it still had the graininess. Still smelled youthful. I think Jefferson's just, it never really connected with me. And I think Jefferson's reserve just the normal shelf bottle, the 45, you know, 45% is just very average, you know, and the, the oceans is, you know, on a ship, travels around the world, cool story, probably the, one of the best stories in bourbon. And maybe that was that note I couldn't put my finger on, because this is the one I said I can't put my finger on what that note is. Maybe it's a little bit of brininess, you know, and now that I smell it, I can say it's brininess, but I don't know. That's what I couldn't put my finger on, but... Not a bad whiskey, but I'm not paying 95, 100 bucks in Michigan for this bottle. I'm just not. When there's so many other barrel proofs at that price or cheaper, you know, that and Booker's are at 100 bucks. I can't do it anymore. Sample number two, or my number two choice is three. How many is going to be? Rare Breed. Yes. One of my favorites all the time, um, even when we're not doing blind barrel proof challenges. Rare Breed is just phenomenal. Um, a blend of what six eight 12 year old whiskey I think and this is the one I got a lot of oak on um, and it definitely was oak forward but this was such a well-balanced pour you know I got the almond coming through I had the I don't know what I described now you'll you know already caramel vanilla but the balance on it was just great you know the oak was perfect the mouthfeel was good um, everything about this is a great whiskey and the price too 45 bucks in other states I get it for about 50 here Wonderful stuff. If you haven't had Rare Breed, and a lot of us are fans of Wild Turkey 101, if you haven't had Rare Breed, you're missing out. Like, go get a bottle now of Rare Breed if you haven't had it. Number one, this is the one that God meets you at the, at the gates with. <laughs> no way! Now Greek Single Barrel Reserve. Okay, so this is a store pick that I thought was an average store pick. Um, and today at this level in the bottle, you can see there's not much left, like just over the heel. Wow. Wow. Did that open up to the perfect spot with that much air? That's perfect. Um, the nuttiness was there, you know, that in the wild turkey had that nuttiness, but the rich caramel, the mouthfeel, the finish. Um, for those of you that haven't seen my battle of the bourbons, the best single barrel bourbon on the market, this one, not, not this store pick specifically, but Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve 1. Um, it's just a phenomenal whiskey at the price. Now, they, they've been messing with Knob Creek's labels. They have a 12 year. They've got, um, you know, a 15 year they just put out. And I'm, I'm worried that's gonna cut into these older store picks. You know, this is a nine year store pick that I included just to be the average whiskey in the, in the lineup. But I'm really worried it's gonna cut into, cut into the supply, you know, the 12 year label and the 15. We'll see. I hope they just have a whole bunch of whiskey and they're just stockpile with it and they're going to keep giving out picks because some of the best value at $45, those Knob Creek single barrel picks. Absolutely. Thank you all so much again um, for joining. Great time for me. We're through the Sweet 16. We're moving on to the Elite Eight. Now we know what it is. Got a lot of good whiskeys coming up and there's going to be some tough lineups putting these head to head now to pick just four. Let me know again down in the comments, what are the two whiskeys you would have moved ahead in this round? Did you have two favorites? Were they mine? Were they not? I want to know your favorite barrel proof too. Let me know. You know, just tell me what your favorite barrel proof is. Anything this time, unicorns included. Let me know what your ultimate barrel proof is that you want. Again, quick thank you so much to all the patrons. You guys are awesome. Um, I'm going to be doing another Patreon only live stream very soon. I know I'm bad about doing those because the whole time constraints, but that is going to be coming up. So please keep an eye out for that. And I just want to say thank you so much to all of you who have been following the series. Um, it really does mean a lot to me. You know, you guys have been had shown a lot of love, a lot of support, commenting, leaving likes, subscribing. It really means a lot. And it really helps the channel grow. 
I couldn't be more grateful. I couldn't be more appreciative. So thank you all so much. I'll see you next Saturday for the Elite Eight. We're going to get it started. It's going to be a great time. Stay insane, everyone. Mmm. Mmm.